Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah Allah criticizes drinking and gambling in the Quran which is a societal disease In Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 219 He says Yas'alunaka anil khamri wal maysir They ask you, speaking to the Prophet They ask you about intoxicants and gambling قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ says, you should say that there is great sin in both of them and there's some benefit for people. وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِن نَفْعِهِمَا And their sin is greater than their benefit. So, this concept of alcohol and this concept of gambling, these are things that basically cause many problems in society. Right? So when we understand that Khamar originally was referring to wine, Wine was something that used to be drunk as an alcoholic beverage throughout history. And you find that what people do is when you drink it, it overrides your thought process. You're not able to function the same way that you'd normally be functioning. So you start laughing at things that you, that are, you wouldn't normally laugh at. You start making decisions that you normally wouldn't make. And that's why you know, gambling becomes another vice. Gambling is something where people are taking unnecessary risks or extra risks with the amount of benefit that can potentially come being very small. So what happens is, these two things are paired together. Why? Because they are known to be the vices throughout history in almost every society. There's every single country in the world tries to regulate gambling at some level. Every country in the world tries to regulate alcohol at some level, whether it's this age or this context or you know, not in this uh, time or whatever it may be. These stores should be open and all of that. And the list of harms that these two things has had on societies and had on individuals with, is, is, is massive with such little benefit. But what's interesting is Allah specifically acknowledged, yeah, there's some benefit in there. Yeah, you feel good, you socialize a little bit, all of that, yeah. You feel like the rush when you're gambling and you're, you know, you're putting some money on the table. Okay, double or nothing, I'll do this, I'll do that. We understand. Allah is saying, I understand that there's some, there's some benefit on this individual level, but you know what? The harm and the sin outweighs whatever benefit you can get. So people who make the argument, but there's some good in it. Allah is like, yeah, yeah I know that. I understand that as well. But that's not the way we weigh things. Not, not, that's not the way we measure things. And these two things are so addictive. There's so, something that's so hard for people to give up. That's why very few societies, the only society as a whole that has ever gotten rid of these two vices, for the most part throughout history, has been the Islamic society. There's been no one else. No one else has actually been able to get the courage to even theoretically you know, opt for this or try to go for this. And it's been so difficult for people even to attempt it when they wanted to get rid of it. So when we look at that, and we see that people, some people when they go through this, this these things are clear cut in Islam. And when you see the benefits of removing them from society, you realize the blessing and the benefits of Islam. And we, as Muslims, we say, Alhamdulillah, we, we thank Allah, we praise Allah for having Islam in our lives because some of us, if we didn't have Islam in our lives, we might have ended up being alcoholics. Some of us, we may have ended up being people who are sitting in Las Vegas gambling away our money. But Islam helped us to say, don't even come near that because it's so harmful, it's so dangerous, and we were protected from that, and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from these vices and to rid our society of these vices and harms as well. Ameen.